Hey, what's up guys, Rip here. So this ongoing Gamergate situation continues to get even crazier because today we have some bizarre updates to go over. Now what began as a simple Steam curation group has evolved into something much, much bigger. Now we've seen groups like the Anti-Defamation League come out and take advantage of this situation to claim that there is an extremism threat among gamers. In fact, it's not just journalists and other members of the gaming industry trying to villainize gamers. It turns out, as people dig more into companies like Sweet Baby Inc., they're discovering some of the people they are affiliated with, including some federally funded organizations and initiatives that are trying to research and protect against extremism among gamers. I wish I was joking, but this rabbit hole goes very, very deep. Now we're gonna to return to an effort named Take This. We talked about them in our previous video involving Gamergate. This is a nonprofit that claims that they are trying to decrease stigma and increase support for mental health in games. However, people got much more concerned when they saw the director make a direct statement about Gamergate 2 and some of the dangers that lie among gamers and the threats they pose to members of the industry. And things would get even weirder when people went to their website and discovered that they are fully funded by a grant from the Department of Homeland Security. Yes, there are American tax dollars being used in the name of Homeland Security to investigate gamers. Yes, this is crazy. But that's just the tip of the iceberg here because people have also discovered another related initiative called the Extremism and Gaming Research Network, which is a website here you can see that says they're working together to uncover how malign actors exploit gaming to build resilience in gaming communities to online harms and to discover new ways to use gaming for good. And in their mandate, you can see that they're doing this to prevent extremism among gamers with a collaboration among private sector actors as well as policymakers. This is a very, very deep seated effort here to combat this supposed extremism threat in the gaming sphere. Well, as people like Cabrutus, the leader and creator of the Steam group Sweet Baby Inc. detected, they have made this statement saying, something's brewing. They are scrubbing numerous pages correlated to the government involvement. If possible, please share this message and a bunch of content creators covering the situation are tagged. So what he's referring to is this tab on the EGRN website. This is an archived version of their website where if you clicked on members, the members tab, you would see what being a member is all about, and you would also see a detailed breakdown of all of the individual members that are a part of this initiative, including many professors, researchers, and people with backgrounds in counterterrorism. Now, if you go to their institutional members list, you can see a whole host of organizations, including universities, counterterrorism organizations, international organizations, and curiously, you'll see take this listed under that tab. Well, if you go to visit that website now and you go to the members tab, you get an error 404 message. This website in their members tab has been untouched for nearly three years that this initiative has been listed on this website. But suddenly over the past couple of days, all of those names of the people involved have been white. Now, luckily we have the archive versions but that is a pretty alarming thing. Now you're probably asking, why did that happen? Well, it has to do with this individual right here, an artist named Savvy, who had this quote of Cabrutus' tweet saying, it would appear I have rattled the cage and they did not like my breakdown of their own membership list. Curious, if they're so proud of their work, why delete it? Which leads us into a crazy rabbit hole. So when we're talking about the recent controversies involving Gamergate, we have focused a lot on journalists and some of the unethical and really just incompetent behaviors they have been exhibiting in their coverage of this situation. But when we look at the work of Savvy here, what she has done is 
way, way beyond anything these games journalists are capable of, or at least have proved to be capable of, because she has done some deep research on all of these organizations involved in this initiative, and it helps us kind of frame and understand who's really involved here. So we have to look at a couple of main players, beginning with Logically. This is one of the groups involved with this initiative. Logically, curiously enough, is actually focused on protection, protecting the US election process, which is odd for this whole situation, but that leads us to Middlebury College. Now, why do we talk about this college? Well, they recently announced a research effort that they're doing. It's a project that is in collaboration with the director of who else, but take this. Now, if you go to the government website of the US Department of Homeland Security, you can see their publicly available list of grant applications. Now, if you search up, take this, you won't find anything. However, if you scroll down, you'll find a grant application involving the president and fellows of Middlebury College. Now, if you open that up, you will see their entire initiative here, a project title of Disrupting Video Games video games based radicalization through collaborative cross-sector networks. You can see the applicant, Middlebury Center on Terrorism, Extremism, and Counterterrorism in collaboration with Take This and Logically. And you can see their abstracts, we'll read the beginning of it. Over the past decade, video games have increasingly become focal points of social activity and identity creation for adolescents and young adults. Relationships made and fostered within game ecosystems routinely cross over into the real world and are impactful parts of local communities. Correspondingly, extremists have used video games and targeted video game companies or communities for activities ranging from propaganda creation to terrorist mobilization and training. Yes, anytime you start talking about national security threats like that, it's not surprising when you end up with a funds request of $700,000. Now you can go down here, you can see their, their problem statement. It definitely aligns with everything that these related organizations have been claiming to go after. It says, countering extremism in games and gaming communities require a unique approach that considers the specific sociological, psychological, and cultural aspects of games. This program will improve knowledge and empower game developer and policymakers, building resilience to games-based radicalization by addressing these various objectives. Now, this is definitely a very interesting portion of this video. We have Savvy here who put together a three and a half minute video that we are going to watch. This is quite literally looking like that, that Charlie schizo board meme from Always Sunny where in this case, it's not just a schizo board, it is based on real organizations, all of which are involved in this movement. It is a very bizarre situation, and normally I don't play like longer videos like this, but I think it's very important to understand just how deep this all goes, and as always, there will be a link to this video and the related tweet in the description. I know my threads are dry, so it's video and visual aid time. All information can be found on my X page through a series of three threads at the time of making this. All sources are linked and it is based off of publicly available information. This all started because a Sweet Baby Inc. employee attempted a harassment campaign against a Brazilian man who goes by Cabrutus who made a curation list on Steam with publicly available information documenting the games that SBI has worked on. Alyssa wrote an article for Kotaku defending SBI and omitting information about how it started, claiming it was a harassment campaign against SBI. Dr. Cowart wrote a blog post through Take This Org linking the Kotaku article. On the Take This Org website, they occasionally state they are funded by DHS. Take This Org has a partnership with Middlebury College and Logically AI, a data scraping company who wants to redefine the fact checking business. They are a British born company who use AI to monitor election misinformation and had a hand in the 2020 USA election. As of two years ago, they are partnered with Facebook as a fact checker. They are also India's number one fact checker, according to Wiki. These three entities received $669,000 from a DHS grant for a two-year research project to monitor extremism and terrorist recruitment through gaming communities, but Take This Org is not directly funded through DHS itself. Dr. Coward is also part of the Extremism in Gaming Research Network, or EGRN for short. 
They, together with the Royal United Services Institute, received 317000 Canadian from the Minister of Public Safety of Canada. Several of the EGRN individuals currently work for Russi and have since 2021. Through EGRN and its many members, there are current connections to policy advisory around the world and extremist research through the lens of gender studies. The co-founder says he's got current ties to the UN. Another member has spoken to the Affairs Select Committee and Intelligence and Security Committee of Parliament. Another has spoken to the White House and several of them to DHS and more. And the EGRN's first look into extremism and political movements in gaming communities was through Brazil. Ties to their government exist and may be ongoing. EGRN has individuals who currently work and who are employed with GIFCT, which is the Global Internet Forum to Counter Terrorism, which was started by Facebook, YouTube, Microsoft, and Twitter back in 2017. There are individuals tied to ISD, which is the Institute of Strategic Dialogue in Britain, where they state there is urgent need to build community trust and political consensus around extremism. Pre-existing ties exist through the EGRN to the World Bank, Facebook, various counterterrorism organizations, UNICEF India, and various other organizations with political ties. The ADL has a Belfer Fellow Funding Program, which is a program that advances the ADL's work by supporting groundbreaking research into online hate and harassment and implementing these projects to fight for just, equitable online spaces. In 2021, one of the EGRN members was a receiving member of the fund. The ADL itself, on the website, states that they will work with them to advance their research into online extremism. The ADL has come out recently as well, using the exact same language as these groups, taking interest in extremism through video games. My research has only begun in every paper I read, I find a new connection to draw to. This is only taking into account a few members of the EGRN, so I am certain there will be more to discover. This is the fastest summary I can come up with for now, so please check out my threads on X if you'd like a detailed breakdown and to see the information yourself. Thank you for your time and have a good day. So as you can see, the rabbit hole on this goes very, very deep. And shortly after this video was put on the Twitter, that was when the members list was taken down and scrubbed clean. Now, how is this all happening? Well, there's always a very vested interest in national security. Whenever there's a situation where a university or a project or initiative can find a way to relate it to national security, that greatly boosts their chance of getting funding. And also not just getting funding, but the scope of what they can do with their funding and their initiative greatly expands when it's in the interest of national security. And in this case, the targets of these initiatives are gamers. And whenever there is a sort of initiative disguised as a national security interest, that gives them so much access to the target of their initiative, and that is gamers. So they are coming after your privacy. They are watching you in this effort to combat extremism, as they claim, in the gaming community. This is a very, very concerning situation. Again, thanks to Savvy for making this video, helping connect everything together, because it appears this rabbit hole goes deep, and I wouldn't be surprised if it keeps going deeper. Now, of course, throughout this process, what have journalists been doing? Well, more journalists have been joining in on the fray to defend Sweet Baby Inc. and take advantage of this moment to try to prop up members of the industry for their own agenda. In this case, they released an article called The Return of Gamergate is Smaller and Sadder, where ironically, they would feel the need to make an entire article about it and also basically every single games journalist came out to support and promote this article but yeah gamergate is smaller and sadder this time right yeah of course right yeah we're totally buying that but if you go to this verge article here you can see the author ash parish or parish whatever her name is however curiously as reported by this user this game reporter has had direct contact with Cabrutus through Discord. Cabrutus, of course, again, being the creator of the Steam group Sweet Baby Inc. Detected. Now, let's see one of the messages that she has sent. So let me read this, okay? She says this. I hope those of y'all with an open mind realize that Sweet Baby is not your enemy. I hope you realize that Woke is also not your enemy and that your group's continued crusade against Woke makes you look bigoted. I hope you understand that non-sexualized depictions of women, the inclusion of people of color and queer people in the games themselves 
making them and writing about them is a net positive for gaming. Something to be celebrated, not memed. I hope more of you, like you're, you've done here, actually talk to people you disagree with. What makes me sad is that this is a pattern of behavior that can really destroy people's lives. You have this group of like-minded people assembled in common cause. And while I believe you when you say that you're going to try to clean up your act, there will be those who don't want to clean up their act. And so they'll get pushed into private discords with more like-minded folks who will feel like they have more license or freedom to let their worst impulses fly. And they'll get even more on the fringe The things they talk about will get worse and worse until the alienation is complete. They've lost friends, families, jobs, and health because nobody wants to be around them for this kind of behavior. It happened with Gamergate and QAnon and it'll happen again. I hope you'll stop digging through Kim Belair, the CEO of Sweet Baby Inc. and Alyssa, the Kotaku author, social media posting pictures of them and photoshopping images of them. Yes, this is the author of an article saying Gamergate has returned and it's even more small and pathetic. And yet, they are making the claims that this Steam group is going to be responsible for basically radicalizing a bunch of gamers into being these terrible, awful threats of people. Yeah, so do you think that they're being honest with their article when they say things like this and this is their view of the situation and how they view the subjects of what they're talking about. Absolutely insane. This whole situation has evolved into something very, very bizarre. And I don't know how much deeper this can all go, but I, I, I've been, I, I've stood corrected multiple times at this point when I think things couldn't get crazier, they always tend to. So again, if there's more developments involving this ongoing Gamergate situation, you know you're gonna hear it from me. But that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, share all of your thoughts about today's topics in the comment section down below. And I'll see you guys next time.